All right, welcome back for the episode of Conover Trade. Today is Wednesday, March 13th, 2024. If you're not done so already, please give it a video, thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Come find me on carnivoretrades.com for swing trading alerts, analysis, and live day trading. Anyways, let's get into it today. So there's really not much to get into, uh, to be honest. Um, kind of a throwaway day here for the most part. So really, we just had a uh, small gap up, little sell, and then we stayed in a 10 point range. Yes, a 10 point range until uh, one o'clock. And then we had the um, we had a 30 year auction today. Um, that went rather well. But again, um, TLT here and bonds, uh, unable to hold the gains. And that's been a theme for a while, even when we've had good auctions. And now we have uh, lower highs here on the TLT chart. You guys know I've been um, bullish yields for a while and um, I don't think that's really going to change anytime soon. That doesn't mean that um, I think they're going to go break out right now, but um, I don't really see bonds doing a whole lot here. We already saw inflation essentially confirmed that it was uh, upticking um, yesterday and then tomorrow we have PPI. We've got retail sales and jobless claims. That's probably a lot to do with why the market paused today. We did get a pretty nice little sell program. Uh, in the afternoon, and um, I did talk about this in the live day trading room um, earlier, right around 2.30. There's a lot of gamma sitting at 51.50 that never got closed out. That's unusual uh, for that to happen once you're a certain distance away from a strike. And um, I just got the sense that we were going to have a little power hour fade, and uh, that did happen really quickly, though. Um, we got down to, guess where, 51.50. And um, bounce really quick. So even if we go down to like a five minute, you can see um, very quick, right? Within five minutes, we were down and already bouncing. Uh, so just a quick shakeout. Why did that happen? Um, I think a lot of it had to do with OPEX this Friday. Lots of games being played additionally. You can see here, we were just kind of flagging bullish. Right below 5180, I talked to you guys about that level yesterday, saying as long as we're below that, that will be resistance. Um, so we're flagging to what? Go higher. Um, do you think they want to take retail on board for that? Absolutely not. So you shake them out. So that's kind of how it works. Um, if we can push through this level, your next area is obviously 5190 and then 5200. There should be a lot of open interest there as well. And that could be a magnet for tomorrow. Now we do have PPI. Um, obviously CPI did not, <laughs> didn't matter, right? You know, the market didn't care um, that it was hot. The only way I think that PPI is going to really take us down is if that number misses by a lot, like it's gotta be, it can't just be like 0.1, it's gotta be hot. Like, I'm not sure what the consensus is, but like CPI was 3.1, we came in at 3.2. It's gotta be like 3.6, you know, it's gotta be enough to, to take those, um, to make it so those hedges are worth holding, right? Um, if, it's, if, if it's just an uptick by a 0.1, it's not enough to move the needle. Um, I will say with that said, um, we do have Vic, today was VIX expiration, so VIX contract will roll tomorrow. Should be a gap there, and um, there can be big moves after that happens. It's historically kind of how it works. Um, and but then we do have quarterly OPEX Friday, so I'm thinking that if we're going to get any sort of big move, it would probably be after this Friday and on to next week. But again, outside of that, no matter what I say here, nothing has changed on the chart. Um, we closed just inside of this little trend line here. Um, and by the dip, it has the bias until proven otherwise. That said, again, this market is, you know, it's like, it's, you get the sense that it's like teetering here. Um, yes, it's strong. Yes, by the dip has been just absolutely rampant, but you get the sense that if there's just any sort of like outside move, um, and I really mean when I say that, kind of like the semis here, you know, if there's some damage done to this, um, I think it's going to be problematic, even though we're seeing signs of rotation. Um, you know, the market's just, uh, it's had an incredible run, right? We're up 25% since October. Um, semis are up more than that. I think they're up like 50. Yeah, they're up 50%. Uh, no, 200 or 100%. So 137. Yeah, it's almost 100%. So, you know, at some point we're going to get backing and filling. But either way, um, if we kind of zoom in on the hourly, you can see there, you know, maybe a little head and shoulder there. If that breaks, that would give you lower highs with a lower low on the daily for the first time since, um, you know, the October lows, really. So 
again, just stuff to consider here. Again, um, doesn't matter until we actually break support. What is support? Um, again, it's still 50, 60. I would say right now to um, 50, 90, this little pivot here um, is also an important level. But again, markets are still buying dips and there's nothing saying that we can't just go higher um, after PPI tomorrow. I will say the difference between CPI, again, I keep saying those, CPI, PPI over and over again. The difference between tomorrow and, and Tuesday is volatility is not elevated. It's actually down into the uh, data release versus where it was elevated in Tuesday, on Tuesday. And we're also going to have a VIX that's going to be a little bit more unpinned um, as we're going to have that new role in the contract. So just some things to look at here. Uh, Triple Q is finished down over three quarters of a percent, though. And uh, you can even see that as you know, we can get rid of this again. Um, you can even see that same kind of head and shoulder there hourly, like big left shoulder head and then possible right shoulder has not triggered yet. There's nothing saying it has to. But again, just something to keep an eye on there. And the cues were on the weaker side today. Look at Apple um, down quite a bit. Tesla just, you know, had a nice day yesterday. Look like it was going to um, suck in some uh, shorts and it went right back down. So and this stock is getting heavily and heavily more and more shorted. Just keep that in mind. Um, I do think it wants to test 150, though. But um, we also had, again, weakness from Apple. That just kind of bare flagged all day long. It still has room for a higher low, but just be aware of these things here. And again, if the market loses the semis, I think that's going to be um, it's going to be hard here. So um, anyway, triple Q's, uh, you're very close to a lower low here on the daily, too. So it wouldn't take much for 33.65. We take that out. Um, you're going to essentially be wiping out this whole month worth of trading. So just be aware of that, or at least like the last three weeks or so. All right, IWM continues to hold up well. Look at the look at the pop today, and then really just inside of that all day long. If we look at an hourly, you know, nothing terrible, little slice there, but then right back up, you have an hourly inside bar. So IWM's in, in still in really good shape, and I still like what it's doing on the weekly. We went up into 210. You know, if this can just consolidate for a little bit, that can bust through that and actually break out. Uh, I think it might take some time, right? Because it took us a year to break through this level. So what's to say we it doesn't take a little bit of time to break through it on the, uh, the flip side. But um, pattern-wise, especially on the bigger time frames, it's, uh, it's doing pretty well. Dow broke out of this range here. I think that can still go to uh, 395. Um, and, then before, and then after that, it's uh, 40K. So Dow is still holding up here. And uh, that did close green today. Um, we talked about the semis here. Uh, this, there's the socks. You can see the same pattern. So technology, a little bit, you know, a little bit softer here. Nvidia kind of has the same look. It's a little bit sloppier. Um, but again, just be aware of these things. It's not like it has to happen. It's an hourly time frame, so it can get negated pretty easily. Um, trend is still up on the daily, but until this engulfing candle is closed above, um, especially on a weekly, I would still, you know, just be a little careful with it could be some distribution coming into play there's smci has not obviously been a leader here i think that's gonna if i had to guess that'll probably get pinned to 1200 uh for friday uh anyway igv here that finished lower so we'll see does it back test this trend line and then inch higher um either way the chart has been repaired um very much so ever since that uh, oracle earnings the other day uh, as it is acting a lot better it did come back in a little bit not really the healthiest gap here but um you know, it got a bit here, and IGV is holding up for now. Transports here are down 39 basis points today. What was impressive to me today is that, and yesterday, is that, yeah, it was down, but it wasn't down like a ton. And that was with like massive problems with Boeing, um, UAL. UAL was actually green today. Um, Southwest. Um, AAL. These have all been under a lot of pressure, right? A lot of negative news in space. Look at Delta breaking out, though. Um, but the Jets have held up. We had a one one day slice bounce off the 50 MA, and it's holding this level for right now. Um, Dow Transport's still managing to, to kind of just hang in there and go sideways, even with uh, the airlines, which makes up a large portion of the transports, uh, even with them coming under a lot of pressure for the most part. So transports are still fine. You guys know my thoughts. On those, um, you know, again, if we have a, a broad-based reversal in the market, will they hold up? Probably not, but um, we could look for higher lows at some point in the future. Um, interest rates continued higher 
two year up four basis points. Again, it's not good for the yield curves. Red again, um, three month 10 year did uptick a little bit. Fives, thirties, tens and thirties backed off. Um, but again, two year still got that green bar low that we have been holding and we've never closed below it. So if we start to inch back up here and we break through this, that's where it could get problematic um, for the market and the Fed. Why? Because this is um, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. Always, everybody always you know talks about the ten year um, in relation to Fed funds. This is what you got to look at. So doesn't the ten year means nothing when it comes to Fed funds? It's the two. That's where the Fed funds rate is. Um, but in any case, two starting to curl back up. Five starting to curl back up. Tens curling back up and 30 years curling back up after a crappy auction, or excuse me, a, a good auction. So we had a good auction and then um, algo knee jerk and we're right back up towards the highs. So yields are still hanging in there okay. And um, they, they start to, you know, 30 year gets back through 4.4, 4.42. I don't know, maybe, maybe that would finally cause the market to, um, you know, consider things here a little bit uh, as far as risk is concerned. XHB, new all time highs. Still uh, mathematical level at 108.20. So we'll say 108.20, 108.25. Um, again, that is not a short. That is just a target. VNQ, again, continues to consolidate. No problems here. Bullish inside bar. Small one, but bullish inside bar on the daily, followed by a bullish inside bar on the weekly. Back above the 100-week moving average now. So that's a big positive there for VNQ. Um, but today, just kind of hanging in there, um, you are starting to see separation here between those moving averages. That's a good sign. I like that. XLF, I mean, I don't even know what to say about this. This is just absolutely insane here. Look at JP Morgan. So they can just, you know, BTFP is ending. We know regional banks are going to fail, and this is the beneficiary. So that's um, the kind of what's happening here with JPM. If you ask me, just continues to march to new all-time highs. Is it overbought? Yes. Um, is it due for correction? Yes, but it is, you know, outside of that, it's not parabolic. Um, on the weekly, you're kind of getting there. Um, the monthly, you're definitely getting there. But on the daily, it's not quite there yet. Um, but again, this is leading XLF higher. KRE, that was up five cents today. Let's not make a ton out of that. Or the KBE either. But KBE actually has a decent pattern there on the daily as well. Uh, broker dealers continued higher today, but no new all-time highs. That can still go up as well. All right, in regards to yields, um, let's look at oil. So something happened today with oil that I can say didn't happen recently or hasn't happened recently. Um, it's very simple. So each time we've tried to get above 79, um, with the exception of this day, but this was kind of a, a hammer candle, not really... A breakout attempt but this breakout attempt this breakout attempt what what happened here did we close on or above the line yeah but look at what happened we closed way off the highs today we're right at the highs even in the after hours here yep we're backing off just a little bit here but you got a nice marabozu candle so wide body and not a lot of space between the the, the wicks um i think oil is can break out Maybe tomorrow, um, but definitely uh, early next week. If that happens, I think it's a tailwind for yields. Um, and it's definitely a headwind for the whole May to June rate hike or rate cut. This market has been very resilient. I'll say that. So, you know, at some point, something's going to ruffle its feathers. Maybe that's oil. Uh, right now, I think it's kind of amusing how last September was supposed to be the first rate cut and it keeps getting pushed out and the market doesn't even care that it's continuing to get pushed out. Like, so at, at some point it will care that it, that these cuts are just maybe not even coming this year at all. Um, and the market has been resilient. So keep that in mind. But I think if there's anything that could do it, I think if crude breaks into the mid eighties, that'd be hugely problematic, but we'll see. We'll see this market again. Uh, until support breaks, right? So you guys know the line. Um, XLE here of 1.6. Again, told you guys it's going to 91.50 uh, to 92. I don't love the gap. It's not really that healthy. You know, I don't love it. Um, we did come off the highs, but again, it's still in an uptrend. This could just back off and then go back up. Um, same thing with XOP. Came off the highs, but you did go into this red bar, right? Down, down, lower high, right? So right there, it did. It should. It should have backed off there. 
Max levels right around 150, but again, it could pull back a little bit. OIH might need to pull back as well. Um, this is one of my targets here, and I'm still holding um, a partial position of this from 281. And um, again, you're gonna see 50% FIB, obvious. And then you can also see, um, yeah, right, <laughs> sorry, right around here, pull back, hit it, lower high, break down, back test, back test, and now we're hitting it again. So again, these energy plays might need to consolidate, pull back, but I still like these, um, I still like what they're doing. And again, I've been using this to the positive case for oil. Um, the fact that the producers are outperforming has been, a, has been a good sign for crude, and that's why I think it still can break out. Uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, maybe early next week. Uh, all right. CCJ, that got hammered today. So that got rocked. Um, it did hold the 200. I would count the 200 as minor though, meaning it's only good for maybe a few days because we have we came down, we bounced, then we put in a lower high. So when you hit a level and you're extended from it, that's gonna be major, right? You're going straight into it. The more oversold you are going into a level, the heavier of support that's gonna be versus where you just coiled and baked in the oven for three weeks, it's gonna have energy to release, right? So that doesn't mean it can't hold. Stock is still in a nice uptrend, but it makes it a little bit more minor. I think 3750 is a little bit better of a level. So um, <laughs> that is the gap fill, by the way, going back to Fukushima. Uh, right in that area um, is where I like it. It's, it's kind of getting into that zone right now. Um, URNM broke down today. Again, we'll see where it closes Friday. You can save that weekly green, green bar with a pop back above 47.14. Uh, URNJ, still same thing, uh, 2292. As long as we're above that on a weekly close, we're okay, but it did get hit pretty good today. Um, Nat gas came in again, down on another 3%. Again, I still think this has to make a new low. Um, and then I think it gets... I think it probably puts in a multi-year low at that point, but um, it's tricky because the futures market has a lot of contango. It's hard to make money with it um, in that space. But uh, I mean, come on, like look at this. <laughs> especially, especially this in the this is in the face with uh, inflation, um, you know, rearing its head again potentially. Let me look at, but just just to show you, pretty remarkable. And I, I understand that there's other factors like exports and stuff like that but um you know you got to go back guys like literally to the last time we were at this level outside of the covid lows was in what 1995 it's just wild to even think about so i do think it has to make a new low though <laughs> anyway dollar index here that got hammered today and by the way there is a divergence now between the dollar and yields. Have you noticed that? So yes, we did hit this trend line right around the same time that we hit our trend line on the TYX. I told you that we get a bounce. It did five days up in a row. Um, but take a look here. The dollar has not done much, right? Down 15 cents today. This thing got hit pretty good and it didn't come off the lows much by the end of the day. So starting to be a divergence here between dollars and dollar and yields. We'll see if that continues. But this needs to get going towards 103.50. Otherwise, this could bear flag and then set up for another push down. So dollar is in a lot of trouble here. I don't think that has anything to do with yields. I think that's starting to decouple. Um, gold held up okay. I still think 22 right now is a little bit of resistance short term. This probably needs to consolidate. Maybe back off a little bit. 21.50, 21 are your supports on the downside. And then, of course, 20.75 if we were to get back down there. Um, silver was the star of the day, though, up 3.2. Uh, big move. There will be resistance in this red. Uh, I don't know exactly where, maybe 25.50. But again, just to go back to gold really quick. Look at this big candle here. We rallied back up into it, and then it took us like two months to break out. Um, there's going to be there's going to be sellers here because there's going to be people who bought thinking that there was this is a breakout and they're trapped. So. This should stall out here, but good move for silver. It's back above that trend line. Again, on the weekly, we can go to the monthly too. Uh, I mean, this just looks, it looks good. <laughs> I don't really see any problems, but short, short term, um, there will be sellers at that bar. 
Um, platinum here inching higher as well. If we can get above these pivots, we can go right up into about 990. And that may be higher after, ultimately, I think higher after that, but that's your short-term level. Palladium tried to break out today, came off the highs. I think this might need to do a little bit more consolidation, but it, next stop is 1050. Copper, actually, I, should, I take it back. Copper was the real star today, not over silver. Yeah, it was up less percentage-wise than silver, but um, silver is a more volatile metal than, than copper. Look at this move on volume. I don't know. Is uh, when deflation, <laughs> I guess, is the, is the question. So um, next stop here, this is a breakout on copper. Next stop, I'd say, is, you know, 410, 415. We could even do a measured move here. We'll just say 45 cents. So yeah, 410. So right, we'll say 410, we'll then we'll say overshoot 415 and 420. Copper, big move, big move. I thought this would have to come down one more time. I don't know if that's the case now. Unless the economy really weakens, but the way yields are behaving, the way that inflation is starting to uptick again, I'm not so sure that happens. So nice move for copper. And finally, it's doing something, right? It hasn't done anything in a long time. I haven't had much to talk about with it. But Bitcoin here was kind of quiet. It did make new all-time highs. Uh, it is a little stretched here from the 20 MA. Might come back in a little bit. Um, Ether kind of just got pinned to 4K. Nothing really terrible going on there. Um, Mark, you know, crypto market was kind of quiet today. There's Solana um, made new highs. That can get up to, uh, yeah, maybe around 170 here. So uh, Solana selecting well, Cardano selecting well, um, all the alts still running, still no problems here. Um, overbought on the bigger time frames, but again, that's kind of what these things do, right? Um, again, nothing's changed here. Quiet market, PPI, retail sales tomorrow. Uh, some levels to watch, 5180, 5190, 5200. Um, a break below 5050 with volume would, um, probably get us down to 5130 pretty quickly and then 5120 um those are the short-term levels i'm watching but um again i'm i don't trust any move right now there's going to be lots of whipsaw and um i think that'll continue to be the case a, until friday um, unless we get some type of impulsive move or news um i think if that's going to happen it'll probably be to the downside but um again it's it's very hard to predict um, during a quarterly OPEX week. So anyways, guys, going to wrap it up here. You guys take care. Come find me on conovertrades.com. I will see you guys all tomorrow.